Hello everybody, this is Solar Tiger with another wind and solar power video. Today is the 5th of April, it's Easter Sunday and the time now is 20 past 6. The weather today has been very sunny. It's very sunny and we did some work in the garden. I have repaired one of the fencing panels that came out of there, and the other one, the remains of it is that stack of wood next to the panel down there, it was obliterated, that panel will have to be replaced. So we did some work in the garden and we sat out and enjoyed the sunshine, and we're indoors, it has been a very good solar day, we had a peak power of 163 watts that was 4.69 amps on the solar panels and we have produced 440 watt hours which is 12 amp hours the wind has been very well not much not very existent today we hit 3.6 watts, that was 0.422 amp hours, 0.3 watt hours, that was 0.27 amps. Mainly this is because one, it was not windy, and when I have big inputs from the solar panels, the controller regulates, basically, it just cuts off the wind generator from the batteries because the batteries are being strongly charged by the solar. If I show you the solar the battery voltage meter, it's well up, as you can see. Anyway, the main point of this video is about inverters and batteries. Now, a lot of us use power inverters. This is my 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. And most of us, or a lot of us, do not ground our inverters just because of laziness and convenience. And if you use them in your car or motorhome, you cannot really attach a wire to the ground because you have to drive the vehicle around. So this inverter is not grounded. Now, this does have some safety implications under certain circumstances, but as long as you follow some, a few certain rules, then safety should not be a problem. Now this is a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter, it's a 12 volt inverter, and at, to produce 300 watts it draws 30 amps. Now, batteries uh, the capacity of batteries is measured in ampere hours. I will show you this battery here. Now, most batteries measure the amp hour rating at the 20 amp hour. Uh, I'll start again. Most batteries are rated at the 20 hour rate, i.e., drawing a constant current for 20 hours produces the amp hour rating on the battery. So, as you can see, this is a 20 amp hour battery. So, if I drew 1 amp for 20 hours, then the battery has a capacity of 20 amp hours. Now, that's fine if we're going to draw 1 amp for 20 hours, but we don't. We don't have a constant load for as much as 20 hours. So, with this in mind, I have in this box three 100 amp hour batteries. They have a capacity of a hundred amp hours at the 20 hour rate. So to make a, to produce the hundred amp hour rating, then we'd have to draw a five amp current for 20 hours, and that gives us the hundred amp hour rating. Now that's fine if you want to draw. 
5 amps for 20 hours, which most of us don't. Bearing in mind, I said, that a lot of us use power inverters, which draw large currents. So, with a 100 amp hour rating battery, then if we said that you can draw 5 amps for 20 hours, then some of you might surmise that if I drew 20 amps for 5 hours, I would still have a 100 amp hour capacity of the battery. But unfortunately, this is not true. The more current you draw from a battery, the lower its effective amp hour rating becomes. Because that's how batteries work. There is a science behind this, but it is complex. And if you want to find out, you should search for Poikert's theorem on the internet. I think that's how it's pronounced. So 20 amps would not flow for 5 hours, but 1 amp would flow for more than 100 hours. That's just how it works. So bear in mind that inverters draw large currents on your battery, then you might find that you do not have the amp hour rating that is rated on your batteries. Bearing in mind that you can only use 50% of the rated capacity. So that's just something to bear in mind. Now back to inverters. Now most of us, or a lot of people, put them in cars, caravans and motorhomes. So your inverter is not grounded, i.e. there is no connection to the earth. Now this means that for safety reasons you can only use double insulated appliances. That is, appliances that are marked with the square inside a square symbol. This means they are double insulated and there is no exterior metal part that could become live in case of a fault. So you can use appliances only that bear this symbol. So here's one, here's another and another and another so all these what you will notice with all these devices is that the cabinet or enclosure is made out of plastic i.e. it is a material that does not conduct electricity so under no circumstances can the exterior of the device become live so with these devices this means that a grounding connection is not required. A big, a big giveaway of this is that if you look at the mains cord, there is only two wires in the mains cord. And also, here is another, this is the label that says that it's double insulated device. So in most cases, the cabinet of the device is either made of plastic or wood or other non-conductive material. So these are perfectly safe to use with an ungrounded inverter. And these are various chargers. The charger for the power drill, char charger for the hedge trimmer battery. This is a double AA battery charger. This is a charger for my Bluetooth Sony headphones. This is also true for all the devices down here, for the e-bike charger and the metal detector battery charger. Uh, the charger for the electric bike does have three wires in the mains cord, but the charger itself is plastic. The whole enclosure is made of plastic, so no need for grounding. On the other hand, if you have a device that has exposed exterior metal parts, like this mains powered fan, you'll notice that there are three wires in the mains cord and the grounding wire is connected to the exterior metal casing. So for safety reasons, this device must be run on a grounded outlet. 
an outlet that is connected to the ground. So for safety reasons, this device should not be used with an ungrounded inverter. So that is that. Obviously, you can connect the casing of your inverter to the earth if you're in a if you're at home or a land-based application where it does not need to be mobile, then a connection to the exterior, a nut or bolt, should connect it to the ground. But in this case, the negative terminal of the battery bank must not be grounded, because in some cases this can cause a failure of your inverter. But to clarify that, you should consult the instruction manual that came with your inverter. So, to recap, this is an ungrounded inverter, but I only use double insulated appliances that do not require a ground. These are devices that have plastic casing or cabinet and that display the double insulated symbol, which is a square inside a square. These devices do not need to be grounded and will be safe to use. Also, most appliances that have only two wires in the mains lead, such as this charger, and I have a mini stereo system, also like this, only has two wires in the, gra in the cord and the casing is made of plastic, so grounding is not required. Okay, also a few safety things with inverters. This label was on the front of my inverter. I just removed it to make it easier for you to see. So warning point number one is that inverters, the off-grid type of inverter, must never be connected to the household mains. That is an absolute no-no. And the main reason for this is that if the mains was to go down for any reason and you were still running your inverter, it would mean that the power lines outside would still be live and any worker from the power company could be electrocuted whilst they are trying to, to fix any, any fault. So under no circumstances should you connect your off-grid inverter to the household mains, I do not connect a cable with a plug on both ends, I plug one end into the outlet on your inverter and the other to an outlet in your house. That is an absolute no-no. Point number two is that you should must connect the wires, the DC cables up correctly, uh, you connect the red to the positive of your battery bank and the negative, the black to the negative, if you reverse the wiring for any reason, you will blow the fuses in the inverter, and in some cases you might actually damage the inverter. Point number three is that the inverter is rated for 300 watts, but if you plug in an inductive or capacitive load, i.e. things like electrical motors, fluorescent lamp fittings and devices like that, your, your inverter has only got an effective, effectively one third of the capacity that is rated on your inverter. So if I was driving things like an electric fan or a fluorescent light fitting then, bet, then, considering this is a 300 watt inverter, the load should not exceed 100 watts. Which is okay for most fans, the tower fans or the floor standing fans, are rated at way under 100 watts. I have one that's rated at just 50 watts. And that should be fine. But if you are in powering power tools and things like that that have a high power rating 
and also contain motors, then you'll need a bigger inverter to run them. So that's something to bear in mind. So this is Solar Tiger with a information video. I'd like to thank you for watching and until next time, this is Solar Tiger saying goodbye. Thank you.